territory, why won't you cut ties with Mike Cabanas? I've indicated uh, this morning that any, there is no campaign. So I, I, he, there is no tie other than him as a friend. And I would say as a friend and somebody who's assisted me in the past, uh, I owe it to him to give him a chance uh, to deal with his personal issues. I've indicated that I completely reject uh, the, the approaches uh, that have been taken in the course of this campaign he's just resigned from. And I think people um, who know me know the following, that I would sooner lose uh, the next election or any election I ever participated in, and the next one will be the last one, I would sooner lose the election than adopt some of the approaches that we've seen in recent times that are divisive, that are not consistent with my values and that I've never um, even come close to flirting with. I wouldn't flirt with those. I wouldn't accept those. I won't adopt those. I would sooner lose an election. And so anybody who works on my next campaign, anybody, is going to have to conform to those values and is going to have to understand that's what I stand for. And uh, I think that will be uh, plenty reassuring uh, to people who are looking at this uh, when they also take into account my track record uh, and my values, which I think are quite familiar to them. You said he's one of the smartest people you know. Anybody who's smart and uses Twitter knows that the word cuck means an emasculated uh, traitor to the white race. So where can you and some of you use that word in public find common ground? First of all, he's apologized for that. Uh, and secondly, but he said uh, secondly, I have said it's unacceptable. It is unacceptable. It was unacceptable. And it will be unacceptable for anybody, to, anybody at all, including him, to uh, do anything like that. And those are the kinds of things I'm going to have to take into account when it comes to putting a campaign team together uh, for myself or having people play different roles in advising me. But I think the real thing people have to focus on uh, is um, the fact that I am not ever going to engage in that kind of thing. I am not going to engage in anything that divides people or tries to uh, cause people to be um, anxious about one another because I believe our immigration um, and our uh, diversity have been two of the blessings that have built this city. Uh, I believe that they have not ever been a problem for us, that our system has worked very well. And those are my core values. People know that. And as I've said, I would sooner lose an election uh, than adopt any approach like that that divided people or was inconsistent with the values that throughout my entire career in and out of politics I have uh, promoted and adopted and embraced. And uh, there's nobody that can point to any inconsistency in that in my entire career and I'm not going to start now. Does Nick Cavallis continue to advise you as mayor? No, Nick Cavallis, and Nick Cavallis, people grossly overestimate the degree to which, uh, you know, that I have uh, dealings with him. I talk to him once in a while as you talk to people that you come across in this process, but the answer is that he has no role in my office. You know that. Uh, he, I don't have a campaign organization. Do I talk to him once in a while? Yes, I do. Did I talk to him last night about his personal issues and the hope that I have that he will be able to address those because they've bedeviled him for some time now, including during my campaign? Yes, I did. And will I call once in a while perhaps to encourage him to uh, deal with his personal issues and get all that uh, behind him? Yes, I will, because I think that's what you do. Uh, when a friend is in trouble, um, you support them in getting out of that trouble and, and solving their issues. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I find any any less acceptable uh, the things that have been said in, in recent times uh, and or that I would ever adopt an approach like that myself, you know that I wouldn't and people know that I wouldn't and I think that's what really matters has here. Mr. Cavalli, has Mr. Cavallis advised you on Toronto Hydro? No. Not at all. You've never. spoken to privatization no. about it? Uh, it? It may have come up in the course of a conversation about things in the news when you were writing articles about it or something, but I've received no advice and I've requested no advice from him on Toronto Hydro. And did he disclose you as a, he was a privatization consultant for Toronto? No, I don't discuss with him who his clients are, and uh, so I don't even know if he was a client with, their, with them or not. I've seen some writings about it that uh, you have done, and I've seen the, re the answers back from Mr. Haynes, but I don't discuss with him who his clients are or who his clients aren't, and I don't, these kinds of things, I mean, again, this relationship that you all uh, ask about all the time is uh, far more in your mind than it is in reality. And I talk to him from time to time more as you would talk to a friend.